You guys good? Okay, Coach, whenever you're ready. Yeah, you know, taking a to look at Nevada on, on film, you know, obviously offensively I thought we did a, a lot of good stuff um, to, to produce that many points and yards. Um, it, was, it was good. Uh, you know, the thing we got to clean up on offense, obviously, is the turnovers. That's, uh, that, that'll plague you. And then defensively, um, you know, it's, it's, we got to be more disciplined and detailed in run fits. And that's really what it is. The, it's the frustrating thing because it's, it's so simple, the fixes, but at the same time, like, well, we gotta, we gotta do this. And so that's gonna be a big emphasis for us this week. Like, you know, I think they're just trying to do too much. You know, do your job and then run the ball. I think it, it's as simple as that. Um, but taking a look at UNLV, very talented team on both sides of the ball, very experienced team on both sides of the ball. Defensively, they, they play fast, they're fearless, they go. Um, they got some really good players, really like that inside backer. They got Woodard, um, fun to watch. I, I like, I enjoy watching UNLV on defense. And then uh, offensively, they got a bunch of talent and, and uh, explosive, and they're going to do stuff to outnumber you hat-wise at the point of attack. So we got to be, we got to be on our work. You, you mentioned after the game that um, things, you need to fix things on, mm -hmm. on, on the run defense. How realistic is that given the personnel that's, that's not able to play at this moment? Uh, I mean, it's it's just what it is. The guys that go in there got to they're on scholarship too, and they're here to to do a job, and they got to go out there and do their job, and and we just got to be disciplined in doing that work. It's it's not a talent thing. It's not a. There were very few plays where Nevada a player beat an Oregon State player. Um, it was more self inflicted getting up the field when you're supposed to sit at the line or, you know, things like that that create vertical seams in the run game that can't happen. So um, that, that's, that's why I feel you can get it corrected. I, I, I don't see it being a talent basis. Do you plan to get more involved with the defense? Um, to, me, to me, you know, being half in and half out um, doesn't work. I, I trust Keith. I trust the defensive staff. Um, they're they're going to, you know, fix those problems. I have, I have total faith in them. And, you know, and, and I'm always helping, making comments and helping out. So I'm always involved in both sides of the ball, but I, I don't feel um, micromanaging to a certain degree, I think can be actually more harmful. Re regarding the injuries, the, the numbers that have piled up, have you looked at all at how you're practicing? Is, is it too physical do you, at times, do you feel like? I, I mean, we don't see it, so I don't know. Do, do, have you taken a look to see if maybe change a few things to uh, looked at it we're, we're actually um, we've lightened it from years in the past actually on on certain days um, so, so some of the stuff's happened in game which is going to happen um, there there's been you know there was a, a stretch there where we were losing a lot of guys all at once um, in game and in practice so but uh, a lot of the stuff is is non-contact injuries you know when you talk about knees and things like that that those are usually non-contact um, they so it's it, it's definitely something we've looked at. We talked about how we're, okay, are we doing anything in the weight room, on the practice field? All that stuff is examined to see why, you know, we've had so many this year. Yeah, I was going to ask about the training. Have you, have you you've reviewed all that, too, to see if Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's always um, injury prevention has got to be a big part of, of how we train. And so we're looking at all that stuff and continuing to, to, to research that. Mm -hmm. Andy got some play on the defensive side of the ball. How does a decision like that come about in, in terms of, of why him and, and what about him as a player makes him you know, the, the choice for that? Yeah, uh, obviously being real thin at that position. Um, he has a background in it. He, he was recruited out of high school to play that position, played it a little bit at Cal before they moved him to tight end. So it wasn't a, a new thing to him. It wasn't foreign. So Andy's a real smart, tough kid. So um, – it was <clears throat> easy to identify him as a guy that could do it because he's had a history with it and he can handle it mentally. Coach, four interceptions, you talked about it. Um, do you plan on sticking by Giovanni going into this week? Is he still your starting quarterback? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And Giovanni's done a, a, a bunch of good stuff. Um, and yeah, yeah, we got to clean up the interception part. Um, but, I mean, he, you look at him in game, at the end of half, at the end of game, he's doing, it, he's doing what we need him to do to have a chance to win games. And do you have an injury update on Jam Griffin? I don't. Of the uh, defensive players who were out, do you expect any, many of them back this Saturday? I'm hope we're hoping to get a couple back. Uh, again, I can't or don't know. Some of them are going to be, you know, see what they can do 
uh, tomorrow when we practice and, and see how they go through the week. That's probably what a lot of them are going to be. But we're hoping to get a couple back, yeah. And how did you feel about Alfieri, even though he was thrown into it? Mm -hmm. How did you feel about how he did? I think he did a solid job, uh, especially for – we moved, I think, Wednesday. So we got a couple days of practice and went out and played it. Um, the thing I like about Andy, and he's only going to get better at that position because he, he works, but he plays hard. He plays physical. Um, from an identity standpoint, he's what you're looking for on defense from how he plays. And so I think he's going to help us a ton and, and going to do more of it as we move on. The passing game is – really starting to come along and some of it's been the tight end. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a few games back that you got Terry involved because of Purdue's playing zone, but he's been involved quite a bit the last three weeks. Is mm -hmm. this just an evolution of, of what you're able to do in the passing game now? Or? Yeah, I, th I think, uh, you know, what, what we've seen the last couple of weeks has opened up the ability to use those tight ends a little bit more than what we kind of got early in the week or early in the season. And then uh, I think we've really made an effort Coach Gunderson and his staff to include the tight ends because they are weapons for us. And so finding a way, unique ways to get them the ball. Jeremiah Noga kind of had his breakout game Saturday. I think he had nine targets. He hasn't been targeted much this year. What Was there something you saw from their defense allowed him, or is he just ready to, to be that guy that's step up and start doing some stuff in the passing game? Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. that there's There's games where – you know, those guys move around and, and based on what we want to do with them that week. And sometimes the read takes it, the ball to them. Sometimes it takes it away from them. So I, I think Jeremiah's steady. He's always in the right spot, doing the right thing. And, and just what we got from Nevada in those moments, the, the coverage took the ball to Jeremiah. I think that's why it was more. What's the next step for your passing game? Uh, you know, I, I like the progression we're on. I think, uh, I, you know, we'd like a little bit more, you know, a couple of more explosives down the field. I think that would probably be it. Um, but we had some opportunities, and, and the ball was there, and, and we didn't make it that we could make. So, I, But if I had to pick one thing, it would be more explosive down the field. The center exchange, the, the snap, the ball was on the ground a few times, mm -hmm. uh, Nevada. Uh, you rotate centers. Is that part of it, or is that unrelated? What 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 do you see in that in that issue there? Uh, the, the rotating of centers was more injury based, um, but it's it's just same thing. It's it's the, we got to clean it up. It's a fundamental of, of that position, both quarterback and center, and so that's a, that's we can't put the ball on the ground like that. So there's no injury issue with Giovanni or anything his hands or anything like that that's uh -huh. leading to any of those kinds of issues. No. Uh -huh. We're talking about it a lot, and I apologize, but um, in, on the injury front, who do you uh, ex expect to return this week? I mean, th there's none of them are long-term injuries, so but it's just what, where are they going to be at? Is it going to be this week? Is it going to be next week? So really everyone on that that's not a season-ending injury, we're, we're hoping to get back this week, and I'll have a realistic chance of getting back. Will it happen? You know, we got to see Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday – where they're at exactly. So that's why part of why I can't answer that question. And uh, just kind of how do you assess Law's play? Um, he got in the game a lot more as a, the second running back this week. Uh, just kind of how are you feeling about where he's at, uh, you know, true freshman back there? Yeah, I, th I thought he had some good runs, um, which is what I knew he could do. I feel great about him as a runner. And he's growing in his understanding of, of everything he has to do, pass protection, you know, uh, detail in his routes. But I thought for first game of really carrying a heavy load, I thought Sala did a great job and, and looked for him to just keep getting better. I was wondering on the uh, thought process on the last play of the game, I think you're around the 32, 3-ish. Mm -hmm. um, how much discussion was there about maybe just trying for something quick down to maybe 22 and get a little mm -hmm. closer? Because <clears throat> you still had, I think, seven seconds left. And yeah. I, the – we, you know, that's what we were trying to do there for a little bit. And then it was just uh, with where we were at and the play that we were going to run, um, actually a little bit more space helped with that final throw to the end zone. So I, I think that was part of it. Coach, the UNLV offense have had five different guys rush for 100 yards, the quarterback included. I mean, what kind of, what kind of challenges are they going to pose, both running it and throwing it, that you got to deal with this week? Yeah, I, I, you just said it. <laughs> they got good runners and quarterback, and I think very similar. We, we got to do a great job of looking at how Nevada hurt us um, schematically. 
you know, more than, more than just, okay, they got our good run schematically and how they use the quarterback because we'll see that stuff again and, and get that stuff fixed and, and uh, really drill it, hey, the detail of, of how you need to fit it because it's an, it's an option play, right? They're going to option somebody. So based on how you play, that, that's how the play is going to turn out. We know where we want the ball to go. And then as defense, we got to make sure the ball goes there by being disciplined in our fit. Else? Um, about UNLV, they, they do kind of that interesting offensive formation where they'll put both backs, they'll go a two back set, mm -hmm. but they're both to the same side. Uh, what kind of stresses does that put on a defense? And have you seen anyone else do that before? It's new to me. Uh, I've seen it a little bit. Um, it, it, you know, it, it, when you first see it, it's kind of, okay, what's going on, especially like player, but really when you, when you start just number counts and plays that are being run out of it, um, no different than um, what we're doing, triple option stuff. And, and so our guys know it. It's just the visually seeing it and, and it making sense to them initially. The, the situation, you have so many things to worry about, so many things on the field and everything. But the situation with UNLV and their quarterback doing what he did can happen anywhere. How do you guys deal with that? I mean, maybe it's not any issue here now, mm -hmm. but it could be. So uh, does that wake up the coaching world and the rest of college sports to say, okay, now we have a new problem. Somebody wants to renegotiate, mm -hmm. something like that. What, what, did, what did you think in your staff when that went down? Yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, you look at the state of college football um, all over the country, and there's just a lot of issues um, with – with what's going on. Um, and so you, you, you just got to be ready to adapt. I mean, that's it. I mean, if <laughs> you're hoping some control will come in, but you can't count on it and probably won't. So you just got to be able to adapt and adjust. All right. Thank you, Coach.